My name is Kevin Abdurrahman. You know me as the man inspiring millions, a motivational speaker, public speaking coach to world leaders, an advisor and strategist to gaming, NFTs, and metaverse projects. Kicking it with Kev today is a friend, Philip Devine, the founder and CEO of Riveted Games. Now, you might not know of this name, but this is the studio and the developer that's behind Crypto Blades Kingdom, Crypto Blades Kingdom, sorry, Crypto Blades and Crypto Blades Kingdom, and a whole heap of other things that's in the pipeline that is being built as part of their ecosystem. Let's have a chat. And if you're here watching this video, I believe that you're going to gain a lot of insights from Philip. What's good, my bro? Hey, hey, glad to be here. Thanks for having me today. Man, I appreciate your time. Given how hectic Web3 is, given how hectic you are with your project uh, and the ecosystem play that you're doing, thank you very much for making the time. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's a, it's, it's a crazy time, but I don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. So, you know, you always got to kind of uh, stop and smell the roses, so to speak. And so it's really glad, I'm really glad to, you know, be, be chatting with, with uh, someone as experienced as yourself in this space. So hopefully we can really uh, learn from a lot, uh, learn a lot from each other today. Thanks, bro. Uh, man, tell us, you know, where you were perhaps two years ago and how different it is today. And I guess in the process, folks who don't know about Crypto Blades, or if they don't know about Riveted Games, they'll, they'll get to uh, learn about it from the perspective of a journey, because I really enjoyed hearing it in our previous call. Yeah, absolutely. So two years ago, yeah, wow. Um, or you can pick any two, time frame. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great time frame, really. I think it's, uh, it, it kind of, um, I think, highlights a lot of the different places that I've been uh, personally, that Riveted Games has been as a company. and. Um, and you know it's 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 a time before crypto blades was even conceived as an idea and uh so yeah two years ago i was um working as a a, a basically an it contractor i had a my, my company riveted technology which is sort of the subsidiary or or kind of sister company of riveted games um, i would do a lot of business to business work and uh, really learned a lot just from a technical standpoint as a programmer as a developer uh, managing other developers uh, as well as uh, running riveted games kind of on the side. Um, I say on the side, but it was really my my true passion was uh, in game development and making different games, whether that's um, you know my very first game, which I programmed on my train rides to work uh, that was Falling Stars, uh, ended up uh, finding a publisher for it, uh, getting it released on Steam. That was an amazing experience that was uh, started back in 2014. Um, stuff. Then for, I use that experience to actually start uh, helping other independent developers. A lot of times, single man studios uh, get their name out there, uh, help with help coordinate testing and kind of giving another set of eyes to projects. Because one of the things with games that even we experience a lot, especially in the crypto space, where there's a very high velocity of development speed, um, a lot of times you jump into a project and it's like you know maybe in an alpha state, and you're like, wow, I don't even know what I'm doing. But the developers don't know that. They know exactly how it works and they know the intention and the vision. And so uh, I kind of come from this maybe macro space where I understand where developers are coming from because I've done it. And then I also understand where the gamers are coming from because I've you know really worked the past eight years getting to know gamers and uh, going to all kinds of different conventions, been to PAX East, PAX West, PAX South, um, uh, which are our major uh, gaming conventions in the United States. Uh, showed my games there. I you know partnered with other publishers, got to know a lot of other development companies. And so all that being said, um, that's kind of the previous six years uh, prior to two years ago. And uh, and I was basically funding it through the sales of of, of our games as well as through the um, uh, the uh, kind of IT business to business, you know, sort of uh, you know bread and butter kind of 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 the IT company. And from there, in essence, in uh, essence, self, self-made, right? Yeah, definitely, you, definitely. You're pretty much, you you self-funded and self. You, you did the whole thing bootstrapping it, right? Yourself. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So I would, um, you know, if I had a big idea for a game project, I would uh, pick up another IT contract and <laughs> work a little bit more and make a little bit more money and bring, you know, expand the team a little bit and then, you know, kind of go from there because because it's tough. You 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 really. Um, um, it's a gamble, really. When you're making a game of any kind, uh, it's a it's a real gamble because you don't know if the year or two of work is going to pan out in 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 a sales standpoint. I mean, there's 
probably now in this space because there's so many tools to make games like Unity and Unreal, which are you know names that I think most people have heard of now. Um, somebody can come in with very little uh, programming experience and get a game released. And yeah. because of that, yeah. it's really hard to cut through the noise. So um, uh, the Steam platform was really big for that in the start. If you got on Steam, you were going to be successful. And it was a big now, deal. Anybody, yeah. yeah, exactly. And now anybody can kind of make a game and put it on Steam themselves for like a hundred dollar fee. And uh, there's there's a lot of noise there. So um, so yeah. So I I started uh, with you know developing all kinds of different products and games, and uh, we've released five different games. Um, all of those are are you know currently for sale and and still uh, actively being played. And then in uh, the beginning of 2021. Uh, I kind of had this idea based on what I saw in the blockchain space with NFTs where, uh, wow, NFTs are kind of like cryptocurrency, except they're like um, from programming language, they're like game objects. And you can add all, all kinds of different stats to them and you can have levels and they can have progress and they can have utility. And I just was like, this is, this is, this is awesome. You know, and you have that sort of um, uh, same game economy like, uh, you know, in World of Warcraft, you have World of Warcraft Gold and um, or Platinum, et cetera. And it's like, well, why don't you just make that a cryptocurrency? And then people That's can actively right. trade that. And then the money that they're, you know, utilizing in the game, they can either reinvest to make their characters stronger or they can, uh, uh, you know, just maybe cash out and make a little bit of money. And so that was the whole premise behind Crypto Blades was let's put out some basic game objects. Uh, let's put out a basic cryptocurrency. Um, I was floored when we actually like raised money through a public sale. This again wasn't uh, there was no seed funding or private sale associated with it. Um, it was very much just me kind of trying to figure it out. Uh, reached out to like a bunch of launch pads and got someone to say, "Hey, yeah, let's let's put this project out there." And, and what, um, if I remember this correctly, or um, correct me if I'm wrong, but your your vision was just you just had a small vision, right? Comparison to what happened. Yes, I was looking at the, yeah, yeah. So I was looking at the uh, the market, so to speak, and there was Axie and Axie was uh, really not that big, but it was a big name. Like it was still a fairly successful company and there was, you know, the guilds and things like that were starting to become popular. But other than that, there was like really nothing. And I wasn't necessarily looking to Axie as like, hey, that's what I want to create. Um, um, in fact, one thing I didn't quite, uh, a direction I wanted to go separate from Axie was, um, was I want to do this entirely layer one, meaning I want all of the NFTs, all of the game logic to be like on a smart chain. I don't really want like just an online game that kind of pushes stuff out through the blockchain from time to time. And so, um, uh, uh, so when I was looking at similar projects, I was like, oh, this project is pretty cool. And they looks like they made like 10,000 bucks. You know, that's, that would be like a good, if I can spend a couple months with my team, I have a little bit of margin there. You know, if I make like 10,000 bucks on this game. And so we released it and, um, and people started playing it. And it was like, after at that point, once it's out there, and that's really you the beauty up. of this whole decentralized nature of blockchain games is they kind of took ownership of it and they started to drive the economy. And, um, and it, was, it was really not built for that kind of uh, scale, to be, to be honest, at that time. It's, it's changed a lot since then. But uh, it was it just floored me, like how many people got involved. And um, yeah, I mean, the rest is history. It's it's uh, um, it's been a wild ride. But, you know, now we are focusing on. Uh, all right. So here's what we learned, basically. And what can we do to not only do better ourselves, but support the multitude of projects that are now coming out in GameFi? Before you share with us some of the thoughts. Can you tell us the numbers? Because you you went from if we do ten thousand, that's great. I just checked your standing on Dap Radar, and it's I think you're number eight. So yeah, the eighth top game, not by we have a top game which a lot of people can claim, by users. Right. Yeah. So we are um, uh, at one point we were number one, like in the absolute prime. I think we had like over three hundred thousand daily active users. It was total insanity. It was amazing. Um, and even still now, uh, we are a, a top 10 blockchain game in the world. Uh, we're actually I think launched you're on... Top, you're, you're top 10 pretty much every week. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we're climbing too. So, um, you know, maybe two months ago, we were like top 20 because um, there was just a kind of rebuilding phase that we had where it's like, oh, wow, like 
we this this MVP, which you know our minimum viable product is what we mm-hmm. put out in June, and uh, we had like no time to respond to like the immense uh, amount of of user base and activity that was happening. And so what happened was we had this huge influx of users, and you know we're kind of like like very very quickly like for example we created an entire NFT marketplace from scratch in eight days. Uh, with like no starting point, no like it you know wasn't just a fork of an existing so there wasn't an existing solution, and so you know that's kind of just to give people an idea of like what we were up against when it you know as far as supporting a user base of that size, and so um but yes uh, that being said we are now uh, we've had over 1.2 million players play the game to date, uh, we are a top 10 blockchain game in the world and climbing, um, I believe that we can be top one. Uh, but, you know, really my goal isn't just about that, you know, that's kind of to illustrate it, but I want to be, you know, the, a, a sustainable play to earn economy that creates um, a, a consistent earning potential for players, for anyone who decides that they want to kind of really even take this on potentially as, as their uh, uh, primary or, or maybe a, a side hustle, so to speak. Um, uh, and, and there, and I want there to be, you know, some challenge and some skill to it and kind of optimal ways to play that people who are really into this and, uh, and maximize their earnings. And so that's kind of where we're at just with the crypto blade side of things. And then additionally, yeah, we know what I mentioned about, um, creating an entire ecosystem around this as well, but yeah, we've had blown it out of the water, blown that $10,000, uh, <laughs> initial goal out of the water. Good stuff. So I've got many questions. Hopefully, I'll, I'll perhaps rapid fire them, and then I'll come back to them one, um, you know, uh, one at a time. Hopefully, I remember because I've got a goldfish memory. Uh, how do you execute at such a rapid pace? Because eight days to build an NFT marketplace from scratch—it's it's not a small feat, right? And I'm asking this question, uh, hoping that the insights can be useful for folks who are having to constantly, because rarely do you deploy something. And then your community goes, hey, this is bang on 100%, right? You have to constantly iterate and you have to reiterate. And that's just the reality of it. And very often you have to do U-turns, if not like pivot and do like 180s. Yes, yes, definitely. So um, it's, uh, there's, there's kind of many tiers to it. Um, there's uh, primarily and number one, and what I have to stay true to is like, what's the vision of the company? And, and I know that's like very maybe esoteric, but um, you know, at the time our vision was, I wanna create a safe and uh, sustainable economy for our players. And the reason that we built the NFT marketplace the way we did was because everybody was doing like peer to peer trading. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and the, the kind of, so at the top level it's, I wanna create a safe you know, and useful environment for players. At a bottom level, uh, the challenge was, Players are are doing kind of this peer to peer thing, and um, and some people are getting scammed and things like that. And so, how can we create some functionality very quickly that solves that that problem? Like, so you have to also know what the exact problem is. And so, the okay. we, reason we were able to put out a solution that was meeting the users' needs at the time was because it uh, it aligned with that that vision of creating a safe environment, and it solved one specific problem, which was. How can we create kind of this escrow contract and this interface from our web front end to to solve that? And what we kind of uh, the, the the what we had to cut out of it was um, maybe uh, some more user friendly uh, filtering or performance. You know, at times it performed very poorly, and so you know there was there was definitely like we didn't create the best NFT marketplace in eight days. Um, that being said, you know, what's our vision now? We want to be the best in every sector that we are in. So what have we done? Well, we've taken that in which was working and maybe we didn't have to spend a lot of time on it, but now we have bizarre.market, which is our new marketplace and is, uh, built with all of these other things in mind as far as, Hey, look, we have this huge user base. We are in a position to offer a service to other projects where now, how about we, uh, create a completely configurable NFT marketplace as a service. And so now any game project can contact us and fill out basically some templates and have uh, a much better user experience than if they were to list on something like OpenSea, which really only is good for filtering collections and looking at images. But for GameFi, as I mentioned, you have stats, levels, traits, all these other utilities that users need to be able to filter on. And only the project owners kind of know what those are. 
And so mm -hmm. we're giving them tools to say, hey, look, apply to us. Um, safety, that core value is, is still maintained. So we're going through a 16 point security checklist with every single project that we whitelist and curate. Um, and so that vision obviously is still maintained because what if we created the best, but now we're you know having some issues like OpenC just had where uh, there's you know millions of dollars of NFTs which have you know been stolen recently due to like phishing attacks and things like that. So um, or even you know lots of counterfeit NFTs being sold on the platform. Um, so you know it's kind of like a, a, ma a major challenge and is really difficult to organize in my mind a lot of times. You know like hey what what are some of the things that we said we really value? Um, okay well let's make sure that that user safety is still like number one because that's like a foundational piece of what we build. Um, so, uh, you know, ho hopefully that kind of answers some of the question. I know it kind of went off on a tangent with that example, but no, it's, uh, it's, all, it's good. all related. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Cause I hear some sort of like an echo, but are you hearing me? Okay. I'm, I can hear you just okay, fine. Cool. If there's an echo, I can uh, uh, also turn some things down. on my end. No, no, it's all good. As long as you cool. can hear me, I can hear you well. Um, cool. When you mentioned verticals, it reminded me of the conversation we had, how you've been inspired by the way Amazon built their business from what they were to what they are today. I'd really yeah, love for absolutely. you to, to touch on that because I feel that I just, I just think it's inspiring and more people should hear it. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I think when you look at, um, when you look at any kind of, 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 major corporation like Amazon, you know, that's sometimes it seems like, wow, what, what do I have in common with them? Or is what they've done even uh, repeatable or achievable for uh, a company, you know, like, like mine. Um, and, and one thing that really stuck out to me, uh, really through seeing them grow from, uh, from a technology perspective. So like personally, I mentioned, I worked in this B2B IT consulting business for, uh, for many years. And, uh, and I was, you know, certified in all these different AWS or Amazon Web Services products. And so very, very early on, it hit me like, wow, this company is doing something entirely different. And I, I even it, it, it prompted me to start looking at what their margins are. Um, and I was I was floored that their online shopping had like, you know, something like at the time, $200 billion in revenue. Uh, and um, and like 190 billion dollars in costs. So meaning they had about a 10 billion dollar mar you know margin or five percent margin on their online you know shopping, which is what everybody knows them for. Um, and then I took a look at AWS, and it was bringing in like 50 billion in revenue, which is which was insane to me at the time. I knew that it was utilized by everybody, but now we can kind of see, especially through unfortunately you know, outages or stuff like that, like AWS has an outage and the whole world is crying about it. Um, but it's because they've totally taken this uh, IT services as a business uh, and, um, and, 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 just, and just run with it, really. And, and you realize the that their money wasn't that 50 billion, wasn't it? Exactly. Their margins on that were like 40 billion. So it was it was like 80% margins on on all these IT services and so it got me thinking like wow like why like why a company that sells books like how do they transition into a company that took over the IT infrastructure of the entire world and what what dawned on me was well in order to support you know the you know the, um, one of the first online marketplaces obviously they started it with selling books and now they sell everything and how do you even scale to that size like it's not just more computers anyone who's in it can tell you it's not just more computers and then everything goes faster right there's tons and tons and tons of innovation involved to do what they've done and what they've you know from what i can see um they said well we're the only ones in the world who have ever solved this problem so we can make a lot of money by solving this problem for other people and so what they what i see that they've done is is take uh, this, this IT infrastructure that they built in order to create the most popular online marketplace in the world and say, look, we can all offer this to uh, every other company and now be their backbone because they're not going to do it themselves. Like, it's amazing that we even did it and maybe they're going to have, you know, some in-house services, but this whole boom of cloud services was about, it's going to cost a company uh, you know, fifty thousand dollars in servers and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in personnel to be able to run it and manage it, and you know, yada yada. And then, or you can have a subscription for five hundred dollars a month or five thousand dollars a month, 
uh, to Amazon Web Services and you can solve all of these different problems. And now other companies can scale in the way that Amazon has scaled. And so I saw that that and, and uh, uh, opportunity within the blockchain space because as a company, I'm not building an NFT bridge because I think it's needed. Uh, I'm building an NFT bridge because we have over 5 million NFTs minted on our platform. We have uh, five, soon to be six different smart chains that we support uh, within our product. And our users need the ability to move between chains to take advantage of the best gas prices, to take advantage of uh, transactions per second, uh, to take advantage of you know, the DeFi uh, uh, opportunities that exist on all of these different chains. And, uh, and so we built an NFT bridge, which has now been utilized over 100,000 times by our users. And now uh, we are onboarding other businesses and offering this service to them where all they'll need to do is send us their smart contracts that they want their on-chain data to, to be reflected by. And then we can add that to uh, our completely scalable NFT bridge and do kind of something similar to like what Amazon has done. Um, and and because it's gonna cost us to me a lot cheaper than trying to redevelop, you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, and additionally, they don't have to have all the different personnel like we do, and we support it. And you know, it's kind of on us then at that point. But uh, that's great. kind of what's bizarre yeah, marketplace you, to you and, solved yeah. you solved your own problem, and then you thought, hey, let's do the Amazon model. There's bound to be others who also face the same problem. We yes, can save you exactly. time. We can save you resources. Plug and play, right? Yes, in essence, exactly. For a fee. Yep, yeah. exactly. That's great. How do, how do you? seek out and see opportunities apart from solving your own problem because uh yeah another from, great from, question from, yeah from what i've gathered from you you like to be first and you like to be pretty good at what you do and i admire that <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that's that's definitely true i i don't i don't do things that don't have some risk associated with them in the sense that there might not be a market like a lot of times you know like with crypto blades we kind of created a market because there wasn't any other game uh, that or NFT game or anything like that, where just the everyday person could afford to purchase uh, a, an NFT. Like in our case, you know, you can even get started right now for like three bucks. Uh, you know, that's like the the entry point is very very low as compared to at the time. You know, even with Axie, it was like three thousand bucks for an Axie. And um, uh, and so you know, and of course, then there's these this, this whole scholarship thing, which is a whole nother uh, you know, and guilds, and that's a whole nother area. But um, I wanted to create something that was that was uh, achievable for uh, for for anybody, and so um, that was new and that was risky. And like I said, you know, the market that existed at the time, maybe I was going to make like ten thousand bucks on that. And uh, and yet, you know, it 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 also um, kind of filled this vacuum in the space that I completely underestimated, um, which was the amount of people who want to be able to own those NFTs and who uh, want to be able to. Um, even just be early in this space, like, hey, I want to earn skill tokens because I think it's going to take off, or I want to earn these, I want to own these NFTs because maybe one day it's going to be worth five thousand dollars, like an Axie is. Mm. And so, um, being first is definitely important to to me and important to us as a company. Uh, being being the best at what we do is something that, again, probably comes from me personally. Um, like from my experience, I was on the United States. Uh, gymnastics team traveled the world and you know and and competed all over the place for that and then I was uh, uh, in college I was an NCAA champion for springboard diving and like it's it's definitely something that's very much like ingrained in me to not just not just do something and not even really do do my best although you know that's kind of what I do go for um, but when I see that you know, maybe what the market has positioned as the best is is not even close to what I see us being able to achieve. Um, that's where I kind of step in and I'm like, look, we can do this. Like, you know, my best I think is better than the best what and let's yeah. go and do it. Yeah, so. That's great. And, and I mean, one of the challenges a lot of folks are having in this space is, you know, being able to gather strong team members, right? Because whoever is good at what they do, if they have talent and they're willing to do it and they get it, right? Um, they're pretty much occupied. How have you been able to gather folks to help you with that vision? Because my next follow-on question is, how do you get things done given that you've got so much to do? Take it in any direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, as far as teams, uh, we have a lot of the same challenges that everybody else has uh, as far as team building. You know, there's a lot of turnover. Um, we, we hold people to very high standards and we communicate that right off, right off the bat. 
um, you know, like here's, you know, everybody, you know, even though we're in a decentralized sort of structure, um, we, we, you know, have daily asynchronous standups where everybody says what they're working on, what their blockers are. That's on like an operational level. Um, and, and from a hiring level, uh, you know, what it's come down to is, is through experience, just sometimes you just got to make that first hire and you got to just see how it goes and you have to learn what to look for. And of course, there's many, um, I'm sure if people follow you, you know, they can, they can learn a lot of, you know, maybe, uh, what the hurdles are going to be. Um, and in our case, um, uh, yeah, a lot of it was just through, uh, Hey, we're scaling super quick right now. We got to bring some people on and, um, everybody kind of knows like what the expectations are but additionally once you find those people you really have to treat them well um you know i mentioned that whole building an nft marketplace in eight days like there was a real cost to that uh there uh, especially to our development team um and and at that kind of pace you know we had to make a decision like are we going to run at this pace forever or are we going to draw a line in the sand and say uh, at one point we have to be uh, sustainable as a company, not just sustainable as a protocol. And if we can't be sustainable as a company, then the protocol is bound to fail. It just, it just is. And so, um, you know, that, that kind of relayed into, uh, you know, creating the kind of work-life balance that, that we want for other people that we want for ourselves, you know, even my, even myself, like I, you know, will, will take off, uh, you know, most weekends, I will take off, uh, most evenings and, and spend that with the people that matter to me. And, builds me up that allows me to keep going you know because i want to be in this industry for like 50 50 plus years and um uh, now, this willing. is so, so so crucial you know uh, uh, please just put it back put this back for a minute and you know just to hear it again right because we're so go 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 i had to even have this conversation with myself today at the gym i'm like hey man uh spend time with your mom right yeah you know you're on the phone call you're doing this you're doing that you you know, you're talking to people, you're doing advisory. Have you spent time with your mom? Like what's important for you, Kev, right? And it's yeah. very often we need to have these conversations, right? Taking the weekend off, spending the evenings for yourself and, you know, just to recharge and with your loved ones so you can be here for the next 50 years. Yeah, exactly. And, and another thing I found too, because there's this fear that if I do that, I'm going to miss opportunities. And <laughs> there might be opportunities that you miss and also realize that there's opportunities you're missing because you're so worn down. So one of the things that I'm kind of like famous for with the executive team is um, is on Sundays, you know, typically uh, the uh, the executive team will get these emails that I'll say, like, don't read till Monday, you know, but it'll be like a ton of stuff. And that's like my creative juices are flowing again. Like I've just taken Saturday off and maybe I'm personally wiped out because I took the kids to a water park or something like that. Right. And I but I wasn't working on, you know, blockchain stuff or company stuff. And, and so Sunday rolls around and it's just like, I'm sitting there and these ideas are just starting to like swirl in my head again. And my vision is becoming clearer again. And I'm, 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 you know, uh, Sundays are kind of like, even though I'm not working really, uh, I am. Um, That's where all the good stuff happens, right? Yeah, it really does. It really does. All that good stuff happens because I'm not sitting in front of the computer. I'm not, uh, you know, doing messages. I'm not, uh, checking in on things like I, it, I'm, I'm disconnected for the most part. And, and I'm, I'm, uh, you know, just then I'm just like slamming it down into an email as it's coming, um, you know, kind of like a, a, a vision, a vision walk, I guess. And, uh, and then that helps with just keeping alignment because then Monday rolls around, we're setting up like what's really important. Um, you know, my brain has finally processed everything from the previous week and and is recognizing you know what the next steps for this week should be um and even what the next steps for the next months or years need to be and uh and and so that's that's there's there's a cost to just going 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 and there's a benefit to stopping and resting 100 percent, man. and i think with with every year that passes us by both age-wise but also experience right you realize that there is more value in just taking a moment to calm down and even if it means at the cost of missing things, but like you said, right, you're, you're missing more by just going, go, go, go the whole time. Like if you don't step back, you can't see the picture, right? If you're in the frame, you don't see the picture. You need to step back a bit. Yeah, definitely. And then one more thing that kind of comes out of that too is um, I've found that it's, it's far more valuable for me to make like one, like really, really good decision every day than it is to make 
uh, 100 decisions every day of, of questionable quality or even questionable focus. Um, you know, if I can take that one decision and put eight hours of thought into it and, and come up with, you know, a very well-developed, uh, whether it's for alignment or company vision or even for a particular feature, because sometimes I do get down into the weeds and I'm thinking like, wow, you know, what can we make, to, well, what can we do to make player versus player like really pop based on what I'm seeing on a macro level in the blockchain space um, versus, uh, hey, what, what should what should the uh, tuning be for how much this NFT is worth or that NFT is worth? And it's, you know, okay, let me just pump something out there. But if I can really spend a lot of time uh, just on that, like one really good decision every day, um, you know, that, that, that helps. And granted, there's many decisions we do have to make, but take the time for the ones that are important and, and do those like really exceptionally well. What's, a, what's an important one or what's a recent one you've had to do? Sure. So um, it's such a good point that you've highlighted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think one big one is, um, um, so, uh, you know, an area that we've been kind of, uh, we, we do a lot of different things, like as far as, hey, what's, what's, what's the marketing team up to, or what's the, you know, what's the uh, development team up to, and um, how is our, you know, how are our different tokens doing, and how are those projects actually developing, and so um, I have been kind of running around like crazy, trying to sort of, you know, push all these different places around, you know, myself, um, and, and what I realized was, um, instead, I need to spend some significant time on a one particular directive for marketing team and one particular directive for development team to make sure that they're aligned. And so what that ended up looking like was, um, you know, here's, let's just, it's going to start off as a spreadsheet, but, uh, but the idea is going to be fleshed out. If we need other products, whatever, to make this more organized in the future, that's fine. But what I need everybody to do is sit down and Take two days off of marketing if you need to. Like, don't even market the products. Like, just sit down and fill out, you know, the next week's worth of materials of content. Um, and and I want you guys to write out for me, uh, but really for yourselves and for everyone else too. Like, what's the goal of each of these different campaigns that we're going to be running? And then just drop those dates in that spreadsheet all the way down to like the end of the year. And eventually, we'll just keep filling this thing out. But I, I want this content plan to be something where the development team is on board because we're not, for example, there's this constant back and forth of, in this fast moving industry of we're putting out marketing material that's now putting pressure on the development team because the development team has to now come through on it and they weren't necessarily in the loop. And like we have all these issues like within the company about just keeping everybody in the loop. And so, uh, and so this directive, instead of me just trying to like put people in the right places and be a part of a hundred different meetings, uh, you know, every single day, not it wasn't going to be a sustainable method for keeping everybody on track. And so, uh, so yeah, this initiative was just, I need you guys to do this. Everybody, stop everything you're doing. We're going to go in a completely different direction. The development team is going to be able to review, and the marketing team is going to be able to explain the intention. And uh, moving forward. Uh, there's, there's no more blame games. There's no more, um, uh, I didn't know about this. And, uh, and as a result, my hope, and this is something that's like, even in the works, like, right, this might fail, but this is kind of the, this is the decision I, I made. It was, I want everybody to be completely aligned, uh, so that we can be working together, staying passionate about the products that we're building and, uh, and staying focused on, uh, like when I look at this plan and I see, Great, we're saying, saying a lot about the product, but are we saying enough about the token? Um, you know, it's, I don't have to really do, I don't really have to be involved because all those questions are kind of there because I've laid out on a macro scale all the things that are important to us as a company and as a product. And, uh, and now they can kind of fill in the blanks versus me reviewing a whole bunch of different, you know, tweets or reviewing a bunch of medium articles or, you know, things like that. Cause um, I, I can't, I can't do that. And, uh, and the team, you know, they need some direction on like, you know, they, they need someone on the higher level, like telling people what it is that uh, the challenges are from the other side. And so it's kind of a system, you know, that, that we put in place. So that's kind of like one example of, you know, we had a problem and there's that solution and it's taken just some, you know, reworking. But yeah, um, th th this reminds of me of, of a book I read, uh, which was The One Thing. Did you ever read it? I haven't, but I've heard of it. Yes, it's super cool. And in essence, it's pretty much what you've implemented, right? And the, 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 um, 
the thesis of that book, the one liner of it was what, what's the one thing you can do that by doing it makes the rest of, it makes every other decision or every action either obsolete or negligible, right? So it's just that one thing that you do and it has an, that kind of like just flow on impact. Right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely where we're at with, um, uh, I, I want, I want us to, you know, be that Amazon of the blockchain space. I, I was going to say, tell me the vision of riveted games. Yeah. yeah so for riveted games, um, you know, we've, we've, we've got our focus in our niche, which is blockchain gaming. And, mm -hmm. Um, we have experience in traditional gaming as well, so that factors into it too. Um, and additionally, because we're the first in this space and because we are uh, one of the most successful in this space, we are positioned uniquely to uh, 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 provide trustworthy services to other projects. And so um, I definitely see us, you know, I, I've kind of gone over it a little bit with what we're doing on the NFT bridge. But additionally, um, GameFi is so much more than even just the games and the technology. So we also have the communities behind it. So, um, you know, we are uh, advising and, and helping build a, um, a content uh, creation platform where content creators in the space can uh, monetize, you know, their unique vision and, and unique take on things, uh, people, communities can, can subscribe and can learn and can, uh, can grow themselves. So, you know, it's kind of creating this market somewhat like what Patreon has done for uh, the content creator platforms of, of allowing creators to, to monetize themselves. That's one element. So that's this community building aspect where we want to be facilitating that, uh, again, the blockchain specific and in a web 3.0 way. Um, additionally, we have, uh, for example, uh, a an in-house merchandise uh, uh, fulfillment product where our users, they earn skill tokens by playing the game. They can actually use those skill tokens to go to a merchandise store and uh, and pay for you know hundreds of different physical goods items uh, completely with skill token, pay for shipping and everything, worldwide fulfillment in two weeks. And uh, again, what's the, what's the goal there? Well, we wanna build technology that helps our product and other products to develop brand awareness, brand loyalty and token utility. And because that's those are some areas that I think are lacking in gamify right now, and 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 real uh, ones, right? A lot of folks talk about it. You're talking right. about real utility, right? Real right. use case, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so it's based on not only some of the needs that I've seen that we that we have as a gamify company, but uh, additionally uh, a lot of the shortcomings of of uh, or really challenges that anyone in this space is going to face. And, and I expect these, you know, these offerings to continue to, to grow as we recognize them. And because we have the development resources, because we have even an immediate market to make some of these services profitable for ourselves, we can afford to, uh, you know, that's kind of that unique position that we have. We can afford to build them, uh, test them out with our community, work out some of the kinks. And then when we go to sell that to somebody else, we can provide ourselves as the case study, as the use case for it. So, uh, so that's that's kind of the goal is providing all of this for GameFi, and and maybe eventually that'll that'll go out into the entire blockchain space. Like you know, our NFT bridge, for example, could definitely be used for just image-based NFTs, moving them across bridge, right? That's uh, across chains. That's that's mm -hmm. totally doable. And yet, um, I'm also making sure that we're not losing focus of the primary people that we are serving, and that we have the knowledge and unique vision to serve. Because maybe we're not the unique. Uh, maybe we're not in a unique position to provide that that particular art-based NFT bridging service. And so I'm going to put that on the back burner. So it's also about deciding what routes not to go down because we're maybe not the best at it right now, or maybe we're not in a unique position. But for the ones that we choose, it's like, what's the low-hanging fruit? You know, let's, let's really take a hard look at what we can do exceptionally well that nobody else is doing, and then take advantage of this position that we're in and make it happen. Man, I admire you as a builder, as a, um, as a leader, as a founder, uh, and as a visionary. Uh, I, I really believe, and I felt it from our first conversation, then you know, having followed you for a number of months, uh, that you're the kind of person that will indeed, if not do one better than Amazon, right? So riveted games will be seen in that light, uh, if not bigger, I have no doubt. You know, awesome, you thanks. I really up. appreciate that. That means a lot to me, yeah. No, 100%, man. Any parting thoughts um, before we, you know, we, we close out the videos? Perhaps any tips, thoughts, advice, or lessons learned? You can take this in any direction that you would give yourself or someone who's new in the space that might be seeking to build or 
to hopefully make a positive impact in the space? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would say uh, it's, uh, you don't have to go uh, against the current necessarily, right? But you can definitely go across the current. And, and what I mean by that is when you see people going down that, that path is, okay, good, there's some traction there and I'm gonna jump in, right? Like I got into games because that was going with the current, like people love games, right? I'm not building any other kind of crazy thing. I'm, I'm building games because that's where I'm in. So I think with, with anyone who's listening, if uh, you do have a unique perspective, every single person does. And, um, and maybe you're not you know, going to lead some huge major company. Trust me, you d maybe don't even want to. It's been a challenge uh, this past year. We, we talked about run. pulling hair, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, it's like, I mean, some, some days I'm on a call, I'm on a video call and I'm like, everybody please excuse like my hair. You know, I've literally been pulling it today. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, and it's, it's sometimes very heavy too. You know, I'm, I have a smile on my face, but I don't all the time. And, uh, but that being said, you know, if, if you're, if you're a developer, for example, and you have a product or a project in mind, then, um, you know, take a look at what it is that you want to take on, right? If you want to, uh, if you don't want to be talking to, you know, venture capital all day or doing this and that, there's so many options for you. You know, you can go talk to a launch pad and they're going to be able to facilitate findings, maybe some buyers to help fund your really great idea, but go ahead and build it. And, and when you build it, uh, make sure that there's, um, your fingerprint on it, that there's something about it that is, as, as I mentioned, maybe going up across the current, that you're going into a, a, a place in the river that hasn't been gone before, but, uh, but there's going to be uh, a market and there's going to be, you know, some traction for you uh, for doing that. Um, and, and additionally, I think, you know, is, is just like the last parting thought really for, for anyone is um, um, don't, don't let the failures uh, convince you that there's uh, that, that, that you're doing something wrong because we failed a hundred times, you know, even over the past year. And I've even had tons and tons of projects that aren't, have not been profitable or successful, but I didn't stop what I was doing because I recognized that what I was doing was still in line with my passions and with my experience. And, um, and yeah, I mean, everybody has to fail. It's, it's, it's maybe a common theme these days, but, um, I mean, I could even consider, you know, crypto blades as, you know, that the, the failures for crypto blades, right? Um, even though we are like a top 10 blockchain game in the world, um, um, I could easily get down on myself about some of the failures of the past year. But uh, instead I just hunkered down and I just continued building because I'm not going anywhere. So um, I definitely encourage everybody to just keep building after you build, even if it doesn't maybe meet your expectations. So uh, that's, that's, I would that's love awesome. to see and hear from anyone that, that does that, yeah. That's super cool. Hey, when you fail, you fail forward, right? Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And every group, regardless of size, they're all failing. Even, even the best of the best. And that's just, I guess that's just part of it. That yeah, sure is. Yep. Man, I appreciate you. appreciate your time. Folks, if you've you know, watched this video and your intention was to you know, pick out a gem or just to learn something, Philip is mindful of them. Um, you know, this is not financial advice, nothing here. We're just friends talking. Uh, please follow through. Follow Philip on the socials, uh, follow, you know, um, Riveted Games, Crypto Blade Kingdom. There's going to be a whole heap of stuff that you're going to see Philip do. He's, he's building an ecosystem. This is a man that you want to keep an eye on, right? The Jeff Bezos of the future. <laughs> Remember, it, it, it was said here. Um, I hope that whoever you are, wherever you are, that you get inspired, you get informed, and you get going. And always remember, be kind, be ambitious, be grateful.